Is Abiko Sensei the one in the right? Or is Goa the one in the right? I think that this is a little bit of a problematic situation where I got my expectations subverted because I thought that Goa was a walking L. I thought that dude looked like a serial killer, which I still think he does. And he fucked up the script. But last episode, the more I started to watch, the more I started to realize, hold up. Goa is just working with what he got. He sacrificed so much and he get little to no credit for it. While Abiko, while yes, that, you know, she is trying to make sure her work wants to be represented and shown, she doesn't understand theater play and was being very hostile and immature. And, you know, she's not really all there in terms of social etiquette and manners because she's an eccentric mangaka, I get that, but she just ended up being a spoiled brat at the end of the day and just ruined it for everybody. Surely there's like a halfway point that we can compromise and meet at. Wonder what's gonna happen today. Let's find out in today's reaction. <laughs> what? Oh, yo! This is a Gravier girl, right? A huge, like, triple D. And this on the left, wasn't she, like, glazed as the most popular kid? Weren't, weren't, isn't she, like, the most popular and accredited idol? Or not an idol, I don't know, an actor or something, right? Isn't she insane? <laughs> Okay, okay, also, also, I, I just... Beyond that, why is this called Playboy? We're in Playboy. Like, when you say Playboy magazine, I don't think that's a place where underage high school students should be posing on. But I don't think this is the same type of, you know, <laughs> a magazine, right? <laughs> <laughs> idol, pinup girl, in demand actress, and an idol falls off, turns into fucking washed YouTuber, <laughs> someone who doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. They get like intimidated by her. Wow. So Frill is just on a different league, right? They constantly tell us, even in season one, that like she is on a league on her own. And Ruby right now, Ruby is like, dude, she's benched and she doesn't do shit. She had a bit of the moment near the end of last season. But like this season as well, like we're probably only going to get Ruby like this from time to time on random scenes, right? And like, the more I think about it, this reminds me of Frieden in uh, season one, part two, where we went into the mage exams. But Stark is not a mage. So what does Stark do? Every other episode, they would show Stark on the edge of a cliff talking to a dementia boomer that's just like, I've taught you everything. It's just like, what are you talking about? But Ruby's basically Stark this season. <laughs> I unironically think that the wife here, Miyamo, she is the most beautiful character in Oshinoko. I will die on that hill. No other character is as more elegant and beautiful compared to the wealth over here. <laughs> Leeching off a Pyeon, bro. Wait till season 3, Ruby. That's right. On a date! Date! <laughs> Smash heaven. I saw the top poster with a bunch of Ikemen with ping pong paddles. This shit looks like not the prince of tennis. The the prince of ping pong. Right? This shit, this is exactly princess tennis style. Right? But it's prince of ping pong. Okay. Oh my god, look at this Ikemen, bro. Okay. Four DX. Four DX? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you can feel it. It is for real. And off screen. 
basically using wind and different, I don't know, environmental factors to get you more immersed, right? That's the whole point of this. I'm not sure if this is like a... I, I think this is just a movie, right? This is not like a RL theater play, was it? But I know that Prince of Tennis, there was... The anime I heard did pretty well. It, it, it was very popular. But the IRL uh, Prince of Tennis, like, musical theater thing, people love that shit even more. Like, it's on YouTube. Go check it out. It is mega, mega popular. You would think that it's cringe, but somehow IRL Prince of Tennis, like, it worked really well. <laughs> Fizzy explosion. <laughs> He even got the drink! He, he even got the fizzy fucking marketed drink smash heaven, bro. That's much Aqua's a fan of now. It's pretty cool. Oh? Wait, what? I didn't know that such a thing as technology existed! The audience stadium, it rotates? Or at least it looks like it's doing a 360 rotation with the different screens. Huh. What the fuck? Oh, the character actors are doing the characters. Wow, Red actually cares a lot. Okay, that's a little creepy. He's been fucking stalking us the entire time, but nice to see that Ryder actually cares about the work that he's doing and even inspired by people, you know? He's having smiles on their faces as they leave as he creepily fucking stalks them. You wanna join in? <laughs> nope, I doubt it. Yo, I, I want shit to pop off today, bro. I, I, I want, like, Goa to, like, start yelling at Abiko-sensei. I want, like, there to be, like, personal beef. It, it, like, yelling the fight. I need to see it. Damn. Damn. Got it, got it. So like the whole point of like us watching this theater and understanding how modern theater uh, infrastructure is able to accommodate a different experience, Abiko-sensei could never understand that. And her being stubborn right now is going to make it even worse than what she thinks it's going to be. So like now we got to go there and correct her and let her know. We just need to break. She's Abiko-sensei is the one that should have came to this day, bro. Like she is the one that needed to see the theater play and be like, whoa, now I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was Goa. リライトにも根気強く付き合ってはいつも客がニコニコでホールから出ていく。本当にセバビコ。厳しいよ。大手出版社を相手にどうこうできるほどどうにかできるのは雷田さんだけですよ。おお。ライダーがなたアビコ先
Yoriko Kichijoji. Is this Goa's actual name or is he calling someone else right now? I'm not recognizing this name. <laughs> Mangako Sweet Home? <laughs> Why'd you bring Melt here? It's gonna have you the same shit. It's like, wow! Welcome at you! 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 What the fuck? Ew. Yeah. Even Melt? Six Station Sensei. I feel bad. I feel bad. But you gotta remember what he did in season one. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve this shit. This is all part of the redemption and atonement for Melt. I kind of lolly senpai still competing right now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Stop trying, Mel. Mel, nothing you say is gonna reach her heart. You just need to be better, and then one day she'll forgive you. All underaged. Miners. She can't drink sake. で、キャンチェンクサーケ。で、私たちは話したと思うけど、それがどうして先生のところに遊びに来ることに。漫画家に限らず、一度売れた創作者ってのは多分編集の言うことなんて聞かなくなるし。So if no one is going to listen to Abiko Sensei other than a peer, we need to convince her, this sensei, to shit on Abiko. How do we do that? Get her super drunk. Get her so wasted. And then just trash Abiko. That's the game plan. Alright. <laughs> まあ、向こうは習慣だからね。この間の見学も原稿の合間、人間のやる仕事じゃないから。脳習慣用に積んだってされた兵士がやる仕事だから。Yeah, so I don't know like how true this is, but it probably is because like one of the things when I used to read One Piece manga, um quite week week by week, I remember every time there'd be like a weekly break and Oda Ichiro Oda is has a great work ethic and he and he always is on schedule, but sometimes when he goes on break, a lot of people are like Oh no, it's a break, but it's like, yeah, Oda needs his break. But if you looked at some of the documentaries or little videos where Mangaka kind of like explains their work schedule, dude, Oda only sleeps for like three hours apparently. Like, straight up. I hear that the dude has the most unhealthy lifestyle. It's just like three hours of sleep, and then the rest is just fucking work, 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 work. And then to do that for decades, your life is just it's just such an unsustainable thing and you you know of other mangakas as well that has a lot of health issues chronic health issues a very common thing right people getting burnt out hand injuries and stuff like that or even like people just straight up just getting like what was that berserk author right kentaro mura died recently too it's just the whole work ethic the, not the work ethic but the schedule that that requires such a work ethic is so unhealthy but you know I'm sure, like, right now, this, you know, this, this scene from Oshinoko is the author herself kind of, or himself kind of explaining, yeah, this shit's fucked up. But the consumer at the end of the day just wants the end product and they just hate shit like that. Yeah, Togashi from Hunter x Hunter. People call Hunter x Hunter, like, hiatus x hiatus, right? Because of how long people go on break, but, you know, it's just very, the, the everything around it, it's just creates such a tight deadline that it's, it's so unhealthy overall. <laughs> Yeah. You cannot equate autism to eccentrics. Come on now. 
She just got no social cues. She got no social skills. She just sucks at communicating or hanging out or socializing. Don't you fuck? I don't know. I guess that is eccentric, right? What is eccentric? It's like out of the norm, right? You are like unique. You're like different, unorthodox. Abiko is that. Dude, if Aviko is attached to her, almost like a cute kid, like, dude, it's almost like a mom slapping a child. If she does that, if this sensei is the one to correct Aviko today, like, holy, it's gonna get personal. How do we convince her to slap her, bro? We need to get her more drunk. Hmm. She power tripping. <laughs> Editors have two jobs. What do I think they are? Make sure to always make the deadline and just get whatever makes the numbers go up. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so yeah you, you know you, you gotta keep milking it right once the oil is gone everyone just learns out of money right long running shown is they're fucking never gonna end how like one piece as well right when oda said that you know what i think the story is like 70 percent done i bet there's a huge panic attack in the industry of like oh fuck no no, this is one piece. This is we maybe that's why Studio Whip was like, you know what? Let's just reboot it. HD. So they can keep going. Or rom com series, right? Rom com mangas, they just never seem to end. Confessions never happen. It's always just like teasing here and there. Cause like you need to just keep milking it. Everyone needs that job security. You know? Detective Conan, Pokemon, I don't fucking know. It's it's just <laughs> it's not in anyone's good interest if you're trying to make money off a series for a series to end, right? <laughs> But then there's also different times like Bleach for example, right? The end of Bleach manga I heard was so extremely rushed. And the thing about the Thousand Year Blood War anime is that people have high hopes and anticipation that Taita Kubo will basically rewrite the ending of the end of, you know, Thousand Year Blood War, right? What exactly happened? Like, is there like maybe there's industry drama that pressures mangakas to end? Because like sometimes people just pull the rug and it's like, you know what? I'm sorry. You have one month to fucking wrap it up, right? It, it, like, it, this is directly... Contradicting what Sensei just said, but there must be other industry drama that happened for you know the publishers to be like, pull the plug, you need to wrap the shit up, it's done. Oh, if you do an interview with the women's magazine, your work will become known to a segment that doesn't usually read manga. Okay, okay, Abiko is popping off right now. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Abiko just like spilled a fucking drink on the table. I feel bad for this editor already. Yeah, when she was a kid, when she peaked, right? Yes, Akane! Sensei, I know you're a little jealous. Sensei. Sensei, I know you're just a little bit jealous that Abiko came out of nowhere as your assistant and suddenly start to make strides and now she's popping off in the world of manga. I know there's a part of you that wants to slap that bitch in the face. Come on. We just need to give her a couple of shots of, you know, of encouragement. She gets, she gets confident enough. She goes, BITCH! You gonna learn today! Listen to Goa Sensei! Backstory? No, no, no. This is like last episode, I think. Hmm. Yo! Ooh, that is true! But the scriptwriter is different! It's a different scriptwriter. Goa would never have treated sweet, you know, memories like that. Sweet days like that. She's not wrong, but like, damn! That's so insensitive, man. <laughs> Damn, dude! Kind of based, but also so fucked up, 
dude, like, she just literally pretty much said, Sensei, you're third rate. You're, you're not part of that 10%. You're third rate. Like, your work is trash. Look what happened to it. And like, with the power of myself, I only need to believe in myself. By my own talent, I'll rise to the top. And you know what? Like, she is, she, she is really good. For sure, she gets the numbers, but... To do this to your your friends like that, your coworkers, your colleagues, like that is fucked up. And that is the product of a child that has no social awareness, that has no soft skills, that is on the verge of power tripping. I say is power tripping. Huge ego combined with no sense of common etiquette just turns into a monster like this. Like the part about the only thing you can believe in is your own wit is a bit compelling to me, right? The idea that you don't need anything else in the world except yourself. By grinding out, if you truly believe in your own talents, then the people will see your work. That part, the partial truth of that definitely resonates within me. But at the same time, to do this shit to Sensei without even understanding like what, like how she would feel, like she probably has no empathy for Sensei, right? She doesn't fucking understand. <laughs> Power of friendship versus the power of myself, bro. This is turning to Beyblade. <sighs> and that is true. She is gifted. Mm. <sighs> Man. It's a tough situation, right? And I think everyone can relate to a situation like this where whether or not, like, for me as well, right? For me as well, like, when I see other YouTube channels, you know, reaction channels that does so well and get numbers that I could never imagine, of course I feel jealous. Of course I feel envious. And I think to myself, damn, it's not me, huh? It's them. They're so much better than me. And it sucks. But the thing that you need to be aware of, you shouldn't feel jealous or angry. You should see that as, huh? They can do it. That means that I can too. You should use those examples as motivation and inspire yourself to move forward and try to understand what are they doing right and try to customize it into your own, right? Anytime in life you see anything, like life is a competition. You're always going to get compared, right? Even in family with your siblings, you know, your parents are going to be comparing yourself to other, you know, their kids as well. You go off to college, the workplace, there's always that guy that's better than you. And at that point, you can decide to be salty and jealous and live in a very negative way. Or you can try to be like, you know what? I acknowledge that I am jealous and I want to know that I want, I, I, I know that I can do better and then take that as a motivation, inspiration and do better. But like, damn, I, I, this is such a real thing of like seeing your friends and peers do so much better than you and you feel like you're left behind. It's just like, fuck. I'm gonna slap this bitch today, bro. I hope Sensei slaps her, bro. After my mentor, yeah? <laughs> mentor, these nuts! Come on, Sensei! Just drink a little bit more! Yeah, but the scriptwriter is different this time. It's not the same. Goa won't make it like that. I know you know the schedule and I know the schedule. I I refuse to believe this shit. We just spent like nearly 60% of the fucking episode trying to hint that Sensei is the one that's gonna correct Abiko. There's no shot. We just did all this and we wasted our time. Yeah. In the letter. <laughs> is, it, is it hate mail? <laughs> Tokyo Bladers? Trash. Your work? Trash. You don't, you're not that good. You fucking suck. What, what is it? What's in that letter that's gonna convince Abiko Sensei otherwise, bro? Maybe a ticket! A ticket to Prince of Ping Pong. And then she'll go see Prince of Ping Pong in theater. And then, you know, do better. And then another point is, you know how Sensei just said, I need to be her ally? Right? You know how Sensei said, I need to be her ally? I think that an ally or a friend, at the end of the day, wouldn't just like, echo chamber glaze them no matter what and be a yes man. If you're a good friend, there's a difference between like, um, like sometimes you see other people that might not be as close to you. So whenever they do something bad or negative, you don't really 
go out of your way to tell them you shouldn't do this because it's just like whatever i'm not that close but if you're really close to a friend you will go out of your way to like correct them and say i don't think what you're doing is right man i know you're better in this so like taking accountability for each other is right the ally part i get it because like the previous you know scriptwriter fucked her story up and that's why she's so triggered over it but we'll see we'll see if the letter's gonna do something Abiko Sabijima, I'm waiting at the entrance. Thank you for today. Good day. There's something I want to give you. Can I head over there now? <laughs> she likes using devil emojis. Like, Doors unlocked. Come in. All right. What's in the letter? Okay. <laughs> Solo. Damn. I feel like you just did a poor job teaching the assistants then. Two hours a day? No, you're not managing. You're tilting. No wonder she's in such a sour mood all the time, dude. Two hours of sleep a day, bro? How the fuck could you poss possibly like think even like properly with that? It'll literally kill you. What? 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 Alright, we what, what about the letter though? Are we gonna give her the letter? She's not doing training for them too. See, you didn't even coach them and you're firing them. You need to teach them how to emulate your style. How the fuck can you just how is someone just gonna show up and deliver exactly what you're thinking? You're expecting people to read your mind. ちょっと厳しく言ったらやめるし。絶対ちょっとじゃないでしょ。作品にこう多少妥協しても人間らしい生活をしなさい。私の作品は妥協してます。そんなことないでしょ。やり方が悪いだけ。うーん、the <笑> conversation that's like that's like me ego tripping right now that's that's like me ego tripping right now and being like yo you don't get well <laughs> You don't get a million views per month? Motherfucker, you coming to me trying to talk shit, telling me what kind of anime I need to watch to grow my channel? Motherfucker, don't even tell me how to grow my YouTube channel. You don't get a million views per month. <laughs> no, dude, I'm because I'm like, You can't do this. You can't do this. Dude, oh, this bitch needs to get corrected right now. The slapper sense, like, get up, smack a bitch. そういうの I like this insult. It, it, because like this is this this does not I don't know. This one feels like a funny banter now, right? Cause it's like, nah, I don't care about the sales of my shit's more entertaining regardless. You drawing Unga Boonga Slayer. Bro, this is it. Think about it like this. It's basically like a like an author of freedom. I know that the numbers might not make sense, but you can hear me. It's like an author of freedom or like a different show being like, I don't give a fuck, Abiko. You fucking draw Demon Slayer. You fucking make Unga Boonga Slayer. Wow. Wow, fancy swords and stuff. No one gives a shit about that. I'm actually writing good stories. Oh. 
You know what? The banter right now, I think it's gonna be positive, right? They're kind of just fighting each other. It's, 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 it's not as like, I don't know, a personal as I thought. This is just like friendly banter at this point. I think it's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pandering to readers! You know what? Sometimes, I feel like this is how you get the honest truth out, right? Because, like, if you're surrounded by a bunch of yes men that's too afraid to say what's on people's minds, you can never, like, get a good product. But right now, the there, there is no filter. It's just like popping up. I don't give a shit. This art, you panned to the fucking readers. Trash, right? With that kind of feedback, even though it seems kind of mean, like it might be more productive at the end of the day. Oh. みんなそれぞれ必死に仕事してんだ。そりゃ全部が大成功すれば理想で忘れちゃったかもしれないけどね。あなたも私も3本書けば2本はつまんないまんがありの仕事には常に目。だ、バディアリッチポイント3オッケ
the letter was a coupon or a ticket to Prince of Ping Pong. Now you can, you know, watch the fucking theater and realize how amazing theater is and maybe even respect Goa. <laughs> And that is today's episode of Oshinoko, and it got a little spicy, huh? It got, it got pretty heated near the end of the day. So what really happened today? Uh, we went to like a little date. The date was basically just a reason for Aqua to understand the how, how good like modern theater is. It's not like old theater. There's different ways of, you know, making yourself more immersed. And he respected us so much that he even sent a ticket to Goa. I mean, sorry, um, to Abiko. Abiko getting corrected was basically the focal point of today's, you know, story. And it makes sense because... If you stack these disadvantages that she has of being socially in it, being a super introvert, right? It has no social manners or etiquette, was sleep deprived for two months, fucking two hours of sleep. Yeah, I get it. She's on super tilt. And seeing Sensei, who she respected, have to have her show be crushed in the drama because, well, it was a separate script writer. But I understand that, right? But... <laughs> I, 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 I wanted Sensei to just slap a bitch, right? I wanted to get, to get super drunk and then just slap Abiko. That would have been hilarious, but this is also a fun way to resolve it. Just popping off at each other. Some healthy, toxic banter, just calling each other out. My favorite part was probably when Abiko just like hit her with the fucking numbers. Like, yo, I average 50 mil in sales. The fuck you got? You can't talk to me. And Sensei was like, I don't care. You making manga for fucking Unga Boonga Slayer fans, bro. You're battle shown in trash, man. And then Habiko was like, all right, I'm corrected. And now she'll meet halfway. We'll compromise and we'll figure out a way after she can appreciate the, you know, Prince of Ping Pong and Goa's, and Goa's work. And she'll be like, you know what? We'll meet halfway. And I guess next episode we'll be back with the theater stuff. And that's it from me. If you're still here, if you did enjoy this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for more content. And until next time, take care.